With um, verse of scripture, Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. 
talking about being the light. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. That's God's desire for us is to let our light shine that people can see our good works and not give us glory for it. A lot of times we want glory for the good works that we do. Amen. We want people to say good job or, or thanks for being so thoughtful. But we should always push that glory and tell people to look at Jesus. Amen. So being the light. There's a few things I outlined here. Um, and I, there are a few facts about light. When you think about light, Light is, a, um, is something that if it did not, if we didn't have it, the planet would literally turn into a, a ball of ice and all of us would perish. There would be no plant life. There would be no animal life. Humans would die. Everything would die if there was no light on earth. You know, they say one of the biggest um, and the scariest thoughts of a, a, a cataclysmic event is a, 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 the eruption of a supervolcano, which would flood the Earth's atmosphere with ash so that light couldn't come through. And all of the plant life would die, and all the animals would die, and then eventually we would die. But we need light. They say that you can see a cigarette um, that is lit on a clear day about three quarters of a mile. Just, just the light from that cigarette. That seems like a long way, but you can see that cigarette light from three quarters of a mile. The light from a match is visible on a clear night or a clear day. Well, not a clear day, but a clear night about a mile. You can see it about a mile away, the light from a match. A good flashlight. Now, a lot of us don't have good flashlights. Didn't you hate that? Well, I grew up in Alabama where there was um, hurricanes. And we'd had these thunderstorms and lightning. We don't get much of that in California. But when it went off, the lights would go out. That happened all the time down south. And then my grandma would always be, baby, go get the flashlight. The thing never worked. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You hitting it on the back and trying to shake it and all that kind of stuff. The light, light never worked. But she would always say, get that flashlight. Grandma, get some batteries in the thing. Amen. But a flashlight, the light from a flashlight can be seen for over a mile and a half on a clear night. And when you think about light continuing, a 100-watt bulb could be seen for about 12 and a half, almost 13 miles on a clear night. Now, the lights from a car. Now, some of y'all, please listen to this, because y'all ride around with your high beams on. Hey, man, don't you hate that when you're riding and you got your night vision, everything's going good, and then somebody come with the bright lights? And they mess up your night vision. But the, the, um, the lights from a headlight, the headlamp from a car, can be visible on a, on a clear night for over 20 miles. You say, well, preacher, I don't know about that. Well, you, you ever been to Las Vegas when you come down over that, that, that hill and you can see all those lights from, from, from miles away? And that's the lights from a car. But light is meant to be shown or to be seen. You know, like Jesus said in, um, in, in Matthew chapter 5, nobody lights the light and hides it. And we have to realize as Christians that God gave us a light to shine. Don't be ashamed of your light. Always tell people about the good things that God has done in your life. We shouldn't be ashamed of God's blessings. We shouldn't be ashamed of what the Lord has done for us. We shouldn't be ashamed. We should always tell people that God is my God. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. All the good things in my life happen because of him. Amen. And when we learn how to do that, God can do greater things in our lives. But the, a lot of times we take the credit for the good things. Well, it's because of me, and, and you know, I had this extra money. It's not because of you, it's because of God. Amen. We have to realize that all good things come from God. Now, a Christian's light, amen, a Christian's light should do a few things. I'll outline three here. A Christian's light should expose darkness. A Christian's light should expose darkness. Now, that's one thing about light. It always exposes darkness. When there's light, when the lights come on, the roaches run. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. When the lights come on, the raccoons scatter. When the lights come on, kids run out the kitchen, just getting in the refrigerator, eating up all the, the cereal and drinking up all the milk. 
So when the lights come on, a lot of wonderful things happening. But the thing about light is light, a Christian's light should expose darkness. John chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. I want to break that down because sometimes we, we just read over these things and we don't look at all the minute, minute details of God's word. Every word is for a reason. Not one jot or one tittle shall pass away from the law until all is fulfilled. Now, when we read God's word, every word has a specific reason. God did not send his son into the world. The father sent Christ into the world. Amen? The father didn't come down and die for your sins. Jesus did. He sent his son. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's a very important one because you can't go to God on your own. You have to go through Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, people used to try to do that. They used to try to skip the priests and they used to try to skip the Mosaic law and say, I can give a sacrifice for myself. But God has always set up order. There's something about God. God is a God of order. Amen. You never see nothing that God put together that's full of chaos. God brings order. That's one thing about light. Light exposes the darkness, and then you can see the chaos. But when it's dark, you don't see the junkie room. When it's dark, you don't see the messed up bathroom, amen? When it's dark, you don't see all of these things. But when the lights come on, it exposes all the darkness and the things that are messed up. I think about years ago when I used to go to nightclubs. You did, too. Don't look at me like that. Amen. <laughs> To go to nightclubs and kick it and do what you but but it, there was always why was it always dark you ever been to a, a club and it was the lights were on no until it was time for you to get out of there amen they used to tell you we don't know where you're going but you got to get out of here but they didn't say it in those words amen but the thing about the light is that those clubs were dark because they didn't want you to see what was going on but if you ever stuck around, stuck, stuck around after everything was done and they finally turned on the light, then you see all the junk. You see all the filth. You see where somebody vomited in the corner. Amen. You see the dirty beer bottles and all of the trash. Why? Because they had it dark in there so you couldn't see what was actually going on. And that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to keep it dark in our lives so we can't see what's really going on. The biggest thing that Satan tries to perpetrate on God's people is to get you stuck in the here and now. You don't look ahead. You don't look for the future. You don't look at the life after this life. All you look at is here and now. What can I do for today? What's happening today? But Jesus said, don't take no thought of tomorrow. He said, look at today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to serve God. We can look at the future, but we have to serve God one day at a time. A lot of times we think about the future. I want to serve God many, many years from now. And that's a wonderful aspiration. But guess what? Every day is a new day to be a Christian. Every day is a new day to give God glory. Yes, I messed up yesterday, but today's a new day. Amen. And we've all messed up. Everyone has failed and come short of God's glory. You know, and it's a sad thing when people think that church is some some perfect place and and everything's perfect in church and nobody has no issues. Nobody has no problems. But you know what? Church is a hospital for the lost. It's a hospital for those who who are going through things, who've been through things. We come to church to gain strength. And I've heard it said before that Christians are weak and Christians, they just they, they, they have the Jesus strength. And amen. Praise God. I need the Jesus strength. We gather our strength from God. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. I'm going to say that again. He who believes in him is not condemned. Don't walk around with condemnation in your life. Well, preacher, I'm not doing everything right. Join the club. We got jackets. Amen. Amen. You may not be doing everything right, but we don't put our faith in our own works. We put our faith in what he's done.
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation that light has gone out into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. Least his deeds should be exposed. But he who does, not, who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may clearly be seen, that they have been done in God. A Christian's light should, number one, expose darkness. Amen. The second thing a Christian's light should do is a, Christian light, a Christian's light should serve as a guide and a warning. A guide and a warning. A light should guide you. Have you have, has anyone here ever been in a room where there was total and complete darkness? I'm talking about so dark where you can put your hand in front of your face and you can't see it. Hey Amen. me and my brother used to, um, when we were kids, used to play this game. We would turn off the light and we would, um, this, I don't know, sometimes kids do dumb things. I, but we would turn off the light and we'd run out around the room until we ran into each other. I don't know why we did that. It was just weird, but we did it. Amen. But in that room, it was so dark. You couldn't see anything. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. I got a little joke. I think about a friend of mine told me this years ago, but he said that um, his daughter had him terrified because she made a statement to him. His daughter said, Daddy, I know what y'all do at night when it's dark and all the lights are out. He was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> he said, what do we do? She said, y'all wait till everybody's gone to sleep and everything's quiet. You go in your room and close the door. He said, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> he said, and I know what y'all do. Y'all go in there and then you turn on this soft music. He said, oh, Lord, they, they know. <laughs> but he said, <laughs> she continued, you turn on this soft music and then you get in the bed and you just jump in the bed. Because, can, can you know, that's, a, that's, a, that's bad. You don't want your kids jumping in the bed. But he, he, she thought that that's what they did at night. When, anyway, if that went over your head, oh, well. Hey Amen. But I just thought it was hilarious. You guys get in there and you jump on the bed at night when nobody's looking. Hey Amen. But a Christian's light should serve as a guide and a warning. John chapter 1, verses 6 through 13. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Now check this out. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own as his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. Amen. Think about John the Baptist. Jesus said a lot of things about him. He said, of people born among men, there was not one greater. Man, that's to come from Jesus? But he said about John, he said, he's least in the kingdom of God. Wow. And the word of God tells us here that John was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. And as a Christian, we are not, we are the light, so to speak, but we're to bear witness of that light. We're merely to reflect the light of God. To reflect the light of Christ. Yes, the light is in us. And because the light is in us, people will see the light and they'll mistake that light for good that we have done. But just like the Bible says here in John chapter one, John was not the light because people were looking to him. 
They said, are you Moses? Are you Elias? Are you the one who should come or should we look to another? And John emphatically said, I'm not the one. He said, the one who's coming, uh, his shoes, I'm not even worthy to bend down and unloose. Uh, John said that about Jesus. uh, And he stood there baptizing in the river Jordan. And Jesus was coming down the hill. uh, And he said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Uh, Stop looking at everything else. Uh, You can go to all these doctors. uh, You can go to psychiatrists. uh, There's nobody in the world that can take away your sins uh, but Jesus. Amen. You can go to a confession booth and confess your sins to a man. They can't do anything for you. They don't have the power to forgive sins. Only Jesus has the power to forgive sins and the Father. Amen. So a Christian's life should serve as a guide and as a warning. The third thing that a Christian life should do is should reflect the light of Christ. Amen. It should reflect the light of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. For it is God who commanded us to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God may not, I'm sorry, that the excellency of the power of God may be of God and not of us. Amen. So the treasure of the light is in us. And I love these next few points, and I'm going to mix them up a, a little bit. Um, I'm going to change point two and turn it to, po- well, not, not that. When I go down to point three, I'm going to change that to, um, to point four and, 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 and just mix it up a little bit. Because as I was thinking about this and praying about it, um, we have the light of Christ, but Jesus was the light of the world. You say, well, preach, I heard the song by Hezekiah walking. It said that, that, that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. But he transferred that light to us. And I'm going to show you that through scripture because Jesus is no longer in the world. Amen. And he said, as long as I'm in the world, well, I don't want to go ahead of myself. Amen. But here we go. Number two, only. Only a Christian's light. I'm sorry. Only a Christian can be the light of the world. Only a Christian can be the light of the world. And when you think about that. We, we look for other things to, to, um, to point people to. We tell people sometimes that a, an education is the key to happiness, but it's not. Amen? Once you finally get it, you feel this sigh of relief, and then there's something else that you feel like you need. We feel like being married is, is, is going to give us um, of this feeling of, of joy and happiness and, 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 and where we're going to be fulfilled, and, and that's not it either. Amen? Having money is not it either. Some people say, if I get all the money in the world, I'll be good. That's a good thought, but you're still going to be missing something. Only a Christian can be the light of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. And that can be found in um, a few scriptures. I want to make sure I I bring this out because it's very important. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spake to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, I was thinking about that that phrase, the light of life. A lot of times people are just living from day to day and there's no they're, they're not living for anything. They're just existing. But as a Christian, you realize that life is bigger than what we do on earth. You realize that what I do now is preparation for the world to come. Because believe it or not, when you die, that's not it. That's not the end of the road, so to speak. That's not the uh, everything's gone, I'm dead. And and because that's, that's the reason why people are afraid of death. People never think about that. If you just die and that's it, what are you afraid of? That's just gonna be it. But I think. Deep within the heart of every man, woman, boy and girl and child on earth and person on earth that they understand that there's something other than this life. We know it. That's why we want to make sure we try to do the best we can to do what we need. That's why people seek 
religion. That's why people seek a, a higher power. And everybody knows that man is not the greatest being out there. We know that. And everybody has the desire to worship something. Jesus was the light of the world. John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. These are the words of Christ. The night is coming when no one can work. Now check this last part out. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And that's John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. John chapter 12, verses 35 and 36. And Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spake and departed and was hidden from them. So that's, I just wanted to bring that out to show us that Jesus was the light of the world while he was on earth. But this was transferred over to us, and now we are to be the light of the world. A Christian, only a Christian can be the light of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Amen. You are the light of the world. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness, righteousness, and in truth. Finding out what the acceptable, what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather expose them. Now, there's a few things about light that we have to understand. Light does not speak. Has anybody in here ever heard light? Turn on the light. Hey, I'm on. <laughs> no, light doesn't speak. Amen. And as a Christian, we have to understand something. Stop trying to let people know that you are light. Just shine. A lot of times we come in contact with others who are still in darkness and we want to show them and we want to tell them about our light. Stop doing that. Amen. Just shine. We're in the midst of the holiday season and some of us are going to be traveling and, and going to different places to visit our relatives. Um, it's always funny. They can all, we can always go to them, but they can't come to us. You can go to L.A. every year, but they never come out here. We need to start saying something about that. Amen? Amen? Well, I can't come out there. It's too far. Well, it's too far for me to come there. <laughs> Amen. Tell them that. Just like I can come, it's the same distance. <laughs> Amen. But we understand that we are the light of the world. Stop trying to talk about your light all the time. Just live. Now, one thing about the light, and I think about light, when you, when you, you ever been, in, and my wife used to have this alarm clock. Now, this thing, I don't even know what happened to the thing, but I love that alarm clock because nobody likes to, when they're in a deep sleep, somebody just turn on the lights. You scream, ah, turn it off. What, what are you doing? She had this alarm clock, and this alarm clock would, um, it would, it would beat really low, and a light would come on, but it would be a very dim light. And it would gradually get brighter and brighter, and the, the, the alarm would get a little bit louder and a little bit louder. So it would give you time to get up. And I thought about that alarm clock when I was preparing this, and I was just thinking about how we as Christians and as believers, um, how we treat our light. When we come in contact with people who are 
of the darkness. We want to shine this bright spotlight on, spotlight on them. And they, they immediately, they don't want to see it. Instead of gradually, amen, can, can somebody, amen. And, and we were all there before, man, when I first got saved and gave my life to Christ, Man, I was walking around like somebody crazy. I thought everybody needed to know about Jesus. I, people were like, man, what's wrong with this dude? Everything ain't about Jesus, but it really is, amen? But the thing was is that I had a light, and I wanted everybody to see the light, and I was going around blinding folks. And people were, they were not afraid of me, but they were afraid of the light, why? Because their deeds were evil, and we need to understand something. We don't need to come around with the spotlight shining it on people. What we need to do is just be the light. And when they're around you more and more, when they're opened up, just like that alarm clock, just slowly turn up the volume of, not the volume of the light, but the volume of the alarm and the volume of the light. Not the volume, but the, the, the brightness of the light. Slowly turn it up. Don't just blast it in their face, but do it slowly, because at some point in life they're going to start asking you questions amen you ever been there when people just walk up to you that you never seen before and they don't know anything about you and they just start spilling the beans some of y'all they, they do that at work and they just start telling you everything and they always use this phrase Mona I don't know why I'm telling you this the reason why they're telling you that is because they see the light in you. And guess what? Just like bugs, they're drawn to the light. But the light can't be too bright. We have to make sure we slowly give them the light. And when they come and ask, don't just put the bright spotlight on them. Tell them a little bit at the time so they can slowly digest and ingest the light. And eventually, they'll be a part of the light. But we can't blind them. I think about when, when people have spouses that are unsaved. And trust me, I get it. You want to just beat them down with the Bible. I get it. You want to, because you know, when you learn something, you want everybody to know about it. Amen? And it's, it's, it's like that when you, when you first hear about something, when you first learn something, you want everybody to know about it. But, but we can't do that with God's light. Because it repels. All you have to do is just look at the life of Christ. When Jesus went around places, he just, he didn't never shove the gospel down their throat. He never quoted the Bible to them unless they asked. He would always say this one phrase, what can I do for you? Or what would you have me to do for you? And then they would always ask him for something. Why? Because they saw the light. Again, lights make no noise. All we need to do is just shine. Amen. The third point, a Christian's light cannot be hid. A Christian's light cannot be hid. And there's a lot of things to say about that, but when you look at Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16, which was our, our text, Again, Jesus was the light of the world when he was on earth. Now we are the light. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And as a child of God, when God gives you a light and he saves your soul, stop trying to hide it. When things happen, and again, we're going into this holiday season, and people, the world has taught people to say happy holidays. What happened to Merry Christmas? Because it's his birthday. Well, the time that the world chooses to celebrate his birthday. As a Christian, you celebrate Jesus every day, not just on December the 25th. And we know that that's not the time he was born anyway, but it's just the time that the world chooses. So we need to make sure that we, we, we don't hide the light. But say something. The light that's in you, it can't be hidden. It can't be hidden. We need to make sure we exemplify and we show people about the light. He said a city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. When we have the light and we put the light, we allow the light to shine, not covering it up. 
When you go places, when people ask you, don't cover up the light. God has put it in their heart to ask you things for a reason. Why are you so happy today? Man, because God is good in my life. Why do you always have joy when, when, when things are, how can you continue when, when in, in, in this workplace and this, the, the, the environment is toxic and everything's bad and everybody's complaining? How do you keep such a positive attitude? It's because I have God. We have to learn how to tell people. Stop hiding the light. When you're standing in the grocery line and they start talking to you and stuff, you know, you don't have to sit there and preach a sermon to them. Just invite them to church. Amen. And I know everything's not about church, but church is important. How many of y'all got saved in church or gave your life to Christ in church? There was a study done years ago because people had started saying things like, well, you don't have to go to church to be saved. And I think they surveyed and, and, went, and went around all of the country and surveyed and, and, and talked to people who were believers in Christ. And they asked them, where did you give your life to Christ? Over 96 percent of the people say, I gave my life to Christ in a church building. Don't tell me it's not important. Church is important. So important that the word of God tells us not to forsake the assembly. Amen. Amen. We should not forsake our assembly. A Christian's light cannot be hidden. The next thing we want to bring out is um, point number four. Lights have different wattages. Amen. Lights have different wattages. And one thing we constantly do is we compare our lights to the light of somebody else. Just like all of us don't run at the same speed. Just like all of us don't eat at the same, um, you know, have you ever sat down to eat with somebody and they, they feel like they need to chew every bite like a thousand times and stuff like that? And the one I hated the most, my grandma used to make me do this. I hated this. Eat all your food first and then drink the Kool-Aid. No, I got to eat, drink it while I'm, and she was to hit us and slap. I'm like, man, as soon as she went, mm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Amen. But, but everybody doesn't do everything at the same pace. Just like none of us learn the same. You can't compare yourself to other people. God calls people to do certain things in ministry. Just because your gift is not my gift and my gift's not your gift does not mean that our gifts are not important in God's kingdom. And we have to stop comparing our lights. Matthew chapter 25, verse 15. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on his journey. Talking about the, um, that's the parable of the talents. Now that the, the house owner or whatever, he gave each one talents according to their ability. God knows your ability. And one thing I love about God, God knows exactly how far to push you so he can get the best out of you. Amen. Some of us can willingly do things and some of us had to have to be made to do them. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> amen. You won't take the trash out until it starts stinking. <laughs> you won't clean up until there's dust bunnies floating across the thing like tumbleweeds. And some of us have to be made to do things. And God knows that. Everybody's not the same. So stop comparing your light to other people. Lights have different wattages. You know, when I first gave my life to Christ, there was a, um, a brother, in, and he's a pastor now. He's a pastor in, um, I forgot what part of Alabama, but he was a guy that was stationed with me in Georgia, and he, um, he, was, he was a part of the church that we were in. And, man, I used to watch this guy. You know, because people are always watching you. You may not believe they are, but they're watching you, especially if you say you're a follower of Christ. And again, they won't tell you, but they are watching your life. But I was watching his brother's life, and I was just amazed at how, how spiritual he was. And I remember there was a few times I would, you know, I would get up in the middle of the night to, to do something, or, and, and, and I would hear him in the other room praying. I said, man, I 
say, God, will I ever get to that place? Because I was trying to compare my light to his light. But my light had just been lit. <laughs> so it was, it was a very dim light at the time. But again, lights have different wattages. And when you compare your light to someone else's light, that's not a wise thing to do because you'll defeat your own purpose. You'll look at yourself as inferior. You'll say, well, why even do this? Because I can. And that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to be discouraged. And I always tell people this. You may not see the progress that you want, but as long as there's some progress, some progress is better than no progress. And as long as you're doing what God wants you to do and you're doing a little bit more when God puts it on your heart to do more, not when people do. Sure, I believe that everybody should be a part of a small group. I believe that. Sure, I believe that people should come to church every Sunday. Sure, I believe that people should be involved in the ministry. But guess what? God may have not put that on your heart yet. But when he does... Don't be disobedient to the Lord. Amen. Because one thing I know about God, God always calls us to a higher standard. When you're ready. And again, that's the problem with, with us as believers. We want to push people. Amen. Just like when you turn on that light in the morning, you want to, it's, it's blinding. You want to run from it, turn it off. But God doesn't want us to do that. He wants people to come to the light. Now, there's a false light out there. I want to make sure I bring this, this up. There's a, an artificial light that's a light that's not from God. And I don't know, this is some, some it's not really forbidden theology, but, but Satan, the devil, our adversary, he used to have a different name. His name used to be Lucifer. And that name is the one that bears the light, the light bearer. Now, I don't know what Lucifer did in heaven, but he had the name of the light bearer. So he 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 bore the light of God. And he he did certain things. I know one of his his um, his his jobs in heaven was to lead worship. That's why almost in every church in America, he attacks the worship team the most. You ever notice that? Right, come on now, you know it. Amen. He attacks the people who sing. He attacks the people who play the instruments. They're attacked the most because that's what he used to do in heaven. So he attacks them because he know if he can defile the worship, then nobody will receive because worship has certain abilities. Now, we know that about music. Music, there's nothing else on earth that has the ability to take you to another place. Amen. You ever done something back in your childhood and you can hear that song and it can take you right back to that place? Music has the ability to do that. Amen. When they were up here singing, they went back to the old Fred Hammond when we we're blessing the city. And again, immediately my heart and my mind went back to when I first gave my life to Christ. I remember those songs. I, I remember those things. And that's one thing that worship does. Uh, it has the ability to get you and to make you forget about your problems. Uh, right then, you're enveloped uh, in what God is doing. And you're praising the Lord. You're in a different state of mind. This is what true worship does. Uh, everything is right. You're in the right right frame of mind. All the burdens are lifted away. You're not thinking about the roast in the oven. <laughs> Amen. You're not thinking about the greens on the stove. You're not thinking about none of that. You're enveloped in worship and, and your heart and your mind is already there. Music has the ability to do that. And Satan knows that. That's why it's important that you don't listen to the wrong type of music. And I get it. And people always say this, Dottie. Oh, I just like the beat. But what about the words? Because it's not the beat that you keep chanting over and over again. I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump. Of God. I see a lot wrong with it if you're not married. <laughs> Amen. And these songs that we, we, we keep chanting over and over again. And have you ever did, did that? Wasn't thinking about it and the song was stuck in your mind? You're like, hey. Wait a minute. Because it has the ability to do that, to get stuck in your mind and to take you places. Worship and music is important. 
That's why it's good to be in, in, in church on time, because if you don't get the worship, and I'm not trying to dog you out. Hey, I, I get it. Some, we, we on CPT. I get it. Amen. I get it more than everybody else. Amen. But, but the thing is, you want to be involved in worship. You do. Because it has this therapeutic effect and, and it has a, the ability to strengthen you in ways that nothing else can. Music does that. Amen. And the enemy knows that. So if he can defile the worship, it robs you from something when you're standing before God's presence. And you think about it, when, when the presence of God, when, when worship, worship ushers in God's presence. You ever, you ever seen things about kings and when kings come into the, the court and they blow the trumpets and there's music playing and then the king comes in? That's what worship does. It, it, it invites the presence of God in, in, in church. So guess what? When the worship is wrong and when the worship is defiled, God may not come in. Just think about it. Amen. So it's important, just like it's important what church you go to. It's important who stands behind the pulpit. This dude live 100 miles away. You don't know nothing about him. You don't know where he came from. You don't know where he's going. You don't know where he lives. You don't know who his wife is or, or he's been divorced five or six times. Immediately, that disqualifies him from ministry. But anyway, I ain't going into that. Amen. That's, that's for another, another message. <laughs> Amen. But lights have different wattages. But he gave to each one according to his ability. God knows what you can handle. That's why everybody's not a professional athlete or everybody's not a, a, a musician or everybody can't sing because some of you, if you had the gift and the ability to sing, you'd get the big head. You would never give God the glory. you take the glory for yourself. Oh, yeah, I know I tore it up. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we eat that kind of stuff up. So God knows what you can handle, and he's not going to give you more than you can handle. Amen. All right, the fifth and final thing, talking about being the light. There's a place for your light. There's a place for your light. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 through 31. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. See, even the, even the Bible says you need to be members of the church. <laughs> Amen. And members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, ver varieties of tongues. And then he said, are all apostles? No, of course not. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. Now, when I was thinking about this, there's a place for your light. This scripture is very important, and, and I ran through it fast on purpose because I want to slow it down to show you that there's things that you can do for, God, for God's um, church that are not some type of big lofty thing because everybody wants the big position. I was talking to somebody the other day. It was, as a matter of fact, it was Friday night. Um, this brother was talking about different things. We were talking about sports because we were getting ready to play a football game. And um, I, I made the statement to him. I said, man, I said, being a head, I would not want to be a, a head coach of football, basketball, soccer, badminton, nothing. Because it's too much responsibility. Now, I get it. They, see, to me, you have to have a special thing to do that. But I, 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 it's just too much. I'd rather help. But see, we live in a culture, Alvin, where everybody wants to be the head. Everybody wants to be in charge. Everybody wants this great name. You're not happy with being an employee. I want to take over. That's a problem. That's a lack of humility. 
I'm not happy with just um, just being in the congregation worshiping God. I want to be up there singing, and you can't sing. <laughs> Amen. Or I want to be, uh, I, I, I'm not happy with playing my role as a post player. I want to be the point guard, and you're, you're seven foot tall. No. We have to realize that God gives everybody certain abilities, and it's the same thing in the church. You may say, well, I wouldn't want to be a preacher. I wouldn't want to be the pastor. And that's cool because God didn't call you to do that, but he called me to do it. And trust me, I run from stuff like that. And God knows exactly who to call for exactly the purpose, for exactly the reason. But again, we live in a society today where people want to take upon themselves to be the head, and God didn't call them to be that. It happens in a lot of households. I know I'm getting ready to get in trouble, but... I'm going to say it anyway. Ladies, God didn't call you to be the head. He didn't. That's out of his order. Well, every time my husband um, puts his foot down, I step on it. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. God didn't call you to be the head. And I think a lot of, a lot of sisters, they, they take on more responsibility than they should, and then they get sick. They, they, they have all these issues. They, they get highs and be itching and irregular cycles and hair falling out and stuff because God did not put you in a place to be the head. You're taking too much responsibility. Now, if you don't have a husband, that's fine. Amen. You should be the head then. You, somebody's got to be, be right. Amen. Somebody's got to run things. And I understand, folks, that what well, you say, preacher, well, I grew up in a house where my mom wore the pants and all that kind of stuff. I, I get it, but that don't make it right. A lot of us grew up in bad situations. That don't make it right, though. Well, preacher, this is a new day and age. God does not change. People change, times change, all of that stuff changes, but God never changes. Now, in that scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, he started breaking it down. Now, you are the body of Christ and individual members. And God has appointed these in the church. He said apostles, prophets, teachers, and then he said um, people that work miracles, and then the gifts of healing. The one that I want to draw your attention to is the word helps. Helps. Now, this word comes from a, um, a Greek word that means to relieve, to secure, to participate, and to support. And you know, sister, that's what God called you to do in the family. He did. Well, my husband's not taking a role. Pray about it. Amen? Amen? Now, y'all quiet. <laughs> or talk to him about it. Have a conversation with him. Sit down. Any man would honor that. And what he'll probably tell you is that, okay, honey, since you know I'm supposed to be the head, let me lead. Because sometimes when people are not the head, they always want to talk about the person it is. Are any of y'all bosses or managers or run the shift or leaders like that? There's always going to be somebody that's going to come against your authority. It always happens. You just have to get used to it and do what you do. <laughs> Amen. Like I always say, if I had a nickel for everybody who, who had something bad to say about me, I'd be a millionaire a million times over. <laughs> Amen. But you can't do what you do for that reason. And that's the thing about God. When God gives you a position, just like the light, you understand that God has given you the light to carry. And that's a very delicate place to, and, and a very, um, a very, very careful place that he, he placed you. Sometimes we want to remove the light. When God, sometimes God puts us in a place just to be the light to shine in that place. You ever got a job and it was like, you said, man, there's a bunch of heathens here, and I, the environment's bad and toxic, and I don't need, well, I want to quit. You ever been there? And you felt like you wanted to quit? But understand something, God has you in that place for a reason. 
God brings people in your life for a reason. And yeah, they may be jacked up and got all kind of issues and, and have problems and mental issues and all that kind of stuff. But God put you in that person's life for a reason. Sometimes it's just to be that light. But going back to helps. There's things that we can do. There's a place for your light. You may not be an evangelist. You may not be a preacher. You may not teach the kids. Thank God. I know I can't teach the kids. Somebody else has to do that. Amen. Because I'd be coming there with a belt. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But, but God has placed everybody in the church for a reason. Just like the family structure, all of that's for a reason. Just like uh, the, the, um, the economy, just like the, the governmental uh, body and, and all of these different things. Structure and all of these things were created by God. And when you rebel against authority, you, you literally rebel against God. Because authority was established by God. And it's funny how people always talk about how they hate the country and they hate the government. Go, go live somewhere else. Nobody making you stay here. Amen. But I tell you what, America's a great place to live. I've been all over the world, and I can tell you from beyond a shadow of a doubt. Amen? Amen. Where even our poor folks got something to eat. In other countries, it's not like that. They have to beg for what they get. But we don't know what that's like. You know, people always think that they got it so bad until, until it's gone. There was a guy I met years ago, and he was telling me about how he said, man, I never should have divorced my wife. He said, I thought that was something greener on the other side. He said, and every woman I meet is messed up. And he wasn't no jacked up dude. He, was a, he, he looked good. He looked decent. You know what I mean? He dressed nice. He had a good job. And he had a nice car. And he had a Lexus with some rims on it, sitting on some 22s. And he, I mean, he had it. It looked like he, from the outside he had it put together. And he's made that statement. He said, I sh that's again where you're like, I didn't know this guy from Adam. I had just met him a few times where I had deliveries to the place. But he all of a sudden started telling me his whole life story. And he said the same thing that they always say, man, I don't even know. I don't even know you. And I'm telling you this because he saw the light. And he said, if I would have just stayed with my wife. He said, now she's married to somebody else. And I was thinking on, on, in, in my mind, I said, he probably will never get married. Because there's something about when you do people wrong. The Bible is still true. Whatever a man sows, he will also reap. That's ladies, too. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll be like, well, that ain't, that's for man. No, that's for everybody. Amen. If you sow good seeds, good things will grow up. Amen. If you always talking negative about people and every way you go, that's a problem. And you always got to be the one to start the mess. Amen. Some of we know people like that. You always got to be the one as well. I just had to tell them how I felt. When all that happens, guess what? One day in your life, you're going to have a position of authority. One day in your life, you're going to be in charge. One day in your life, you're going to be the one that's at the top of the seat. And everybody's going to come against you. And don't ask the question why. Because you've sown it. Be careful what you plant. Because it's going to grow up. Amen. I was looking at my yard the other day, and I've, I just wanted to plant all these trees. Pinky, I planted pomegranate trees and kumquat trees and pear trees and, and lemon trees and lime trees. And I really have all these trees in my yard. Because I said, I, I'm not going to take care of something that's not going to give me nothing back. And I planted all these trees. And the day I was looking outside, and I said, man, I got to get out there and rake them leaves. <laughs> but hey, I planted the trees. Be careful what you plant. Had so many pomegranates, I couldn't even eat them all. Same thing with um, pears. I haven't eaten one pear. <laughs> Gave them all away. Amen. <laughs> but hey, praise God. But we have to always make sure that when we take the light of Christ, that we don't hide our light. When people ask you, What's, what, what is it about you? Because they will ask. 
Keep living for God. And can I get an amen, Sister Kathleen? You just keep living for God. Somebody's going to ask you about your life. Because they're going to see the light. And never compare your light with other people because some people have bright lights and some people have dim lights. But guess what? Thank God you still have a light. Because at the end of time, when everybody stands before God, God is going to look out and those lights are going to shine. And he said those who brought folks to righteousness will shine forever like the stars of the sky. Because God is not a liar. You have the light. Take the light. Keep the light. Light, and don't let the devil blow out your light. Amen. Be the light. Be the light, saints. You have the light. You have it. You know how many people throughout history wish they had the truth? And why is it that somebody can hear the gospel one time and probably suffer death, but we can hear it over? over and over again but do nothing with it God gave you the light so it can shine so be the light amen let's pray father right now thank you for your word we thank you for the light God that you've given us when your son was on this earth father he said that he's the light but he gave us the charge of being the light. I just want to pray for that one God who feels like the enemy's trying to blow out their light. And God, it was everything they could do to make it to the house of God today. They've been beat down by the world, God. Social media and the pressures of life are weighing in on them. I just pray, Father, for that covering so that their light can stay illuminated. We know the enemy, God, wants to take our lights from us and transfer them over that they will be extinguished. But God, we just pray that you empower us and let us constantly, continually seek you so our lights can grow. God, we thank you once again for each one that's here. We just want to pray for those who may be sick and infirm, God, as a part of this congregation, that you would strengthen them where they are and that you would give them the ability to carry your light. Father, we praise you and we love you for all things that you've done for us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Remember, saints, you have the light. Don't let your light be hidden. Amen. God bless.